Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing a book review video. I only have six books. I'm talking like a little bit softer because it's night time here and I haven't had a good time to do this video so I have to do it at night after I was done working. So I only have six books. I don't. I thought I was going to have seven but I only have six. So let's just get right into it. So this one, oh, wait, let me show you the one that I didn't like first. And this one is called The Restaurant Critic's Wife. It's by Elizabeth Laban or something. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you said it in French, um, it would sound different. But um, this is what it looks like. And this book I really didn't like. And it was, I thought it was going to be um, really different. <laughs> Um, it's basically, it goes, it's in parts, it goes through the four seasons. It starts with fall, so it goes fall, winter, spring, summer, and then fall again, which is like the epilogue of the book. Um, this book is about the restaurant critic's, critic's wife, and it's about this restaurant critic's wife who tells her personal trouble in their marriage, which is she used to be... She used to work as, like, a hotel manager, like, a regional manager, and then she married the res this restaurant critic and stuff like that, and she figures, she finally realizes that marrying him wasn't all that great because he wants to keep his identi identity a secret, so he, oh, he wants them to, like, um her and their two kids to be, like, not let them, like, they live in, um, Philadelphia, I think. They used to live in New Orleans, but then he got, mo he moved, he wanted to move because a lot of people down there started recognizing him, and being a food critic, you don't want to get recognized, so people don't give you special attention, I guess. So they moved to Philadelphia, where he became a restaurant critic again, for one of the papers down there, and he is trying to make sure that he keeps, like, using different disguises and some wacky things, but he also wants to make sure that, like, a lot of their neighbors and their friends and stuff like that don't know that he and family know that he is a restaurant critic to blow his cover so people start acting weird around him, stuff like that. It was just a really boring book in my opinion because I literally thought it was going to be a book where like she was going to go back to work as a food critic just like him and somehow she was going to end up writing his like critiques or something but that never happened um I don't know if um the places they went to were real in the book I don't know for sure or not um, it was just a really, like, if you like a simple read or whatever, um, it was okay, but the chapters are really long, and I really didn't like that. Like, I really don't like when chapters are, like, 50 pages long or something. I mean, that wasn't how many pages were in the, these chapters, but I just don't like that, because I feel like then it's like, well, you could just probably have edited out, like, most of the chapter. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was a nice little read. I mean, I thought was really boring. It was a really, like, slow storyline, but it was okay. So this is by Agatha Christie. If you don't know who Agatha Christie is, she is one of the greatest mystery writers of all time. I mean, if you would say, oh, like, who's your, like, who are, like, the, like, the top ten mystery writers off the top of your head, Agatha Christie should come to one of them. Could come should come to mind. This is called The Crooked House, or The Crooked House, whatever. This is what it looks like. It's a small little mystery book. Um, all these books I got at, um, book sales. So, like, at, like, secondhand book sales and library book sales, stuff like that. Um, this book is about this man. It takes place after... One of the world wars, I don't think it ever said which one, but I think it was the first one, because they didn't say it was World War II or anything, so I'm guessing it was the first one. 
Um, so anyway, what happens is, is this man, he, um, falls in love with this woman who is just, comes from like a moderately rich family, I would say, and her grandfather gets murdered. And he goes there with his dad's friend because his dad is somebody who works like in Scotland Yard or something. And he has he goes investigates who did this and why while he's trying to get this girl that he loves to marry him. And all this different stuff pops up. It's a really good one. It's I really liked it. And the last one I read by her. When I first read, I mean, I don't have that, that, if you heard that in the background, that was just, um, our dog. But if you ever have, um, I, when I first read her, her first one, I real, I mean, one of the ones I got a long time ago, I really didn't like it. But this one was really, really good, I really enjoyed it. And it was a short read, like, the chapters weren't that long, they were really, they weren't, like, short, short, but they were short. Um, this one, now, I'm going to tell you, um, this one came from a flea market book sale where this lady, um, she gives out, like, bags of books that are, like, 20 bucks per bag, and it's all different authors, but the genre is the same, and I don't know what quite happened to this book, this was like it when I got it. I mean, it probably suffered through, um, water damage, but it looks like it has mold on it. I'm not going to show you, like, the side of it, but, and then there's, like, some weird red-purplish stain on it. I don't know what that is. Um, I hope, hope it's not anything weird. But, um, this is what it looked like when I got it, so it wasn't something that I did to it. And it was the only one in the bag that looked like this. So I don't know why it looks like this. But it does. Um, this is James Patterson and Andrew Cross, third degree. If you know about James Patterson, like, he does ones where um, he does it in numbers. Like, third degree, seventh heaven. Um, I don't know what the other ones are. I mean, it's been a long time since I read James Patterson books but this is what it looks like like I said you can see that it has like a little wave or curl into it um this book is about the woman's murder club and excuse me it's about this detective who has to solve these random um occurrences happening and help her a medical examiner friend who is going through an abusive relationship with her husband. And it's a really good book. I really liked it. Um, I really like when, like, the detective or, like, the main person is a woman because I feel like with a woman detective, it's, you get some kind of, it's like, you get a different kind of perspective than if it was a, a guy detective. I don't know if that makes any sense, but to me, I like it better. And it's, it's just, like, it's better because, like, there isn't that many, at least the ones that I've read, that have women detectives in them a lot of the time. But it was a really good book, even though it would had, like, severe water damage to it. So this one was a book that, it wasn't boring, but it was just semi-okay. It's called The Daughters, and it's by Joanna Felbin. Joanna Felbin is the daughter to Regis Felbin. And Regis Felbin was um, a man, he's an older, elderly man, um, who used to be on a daytime TV series called um Regis and Kelly or Regis and Kathy Lee. I mean he's done other things too, but that's what I remember him by. And this is what it looks like and it's basically about these three girls who are well, two of them I don't know about the other one, but um or maybe no, they're all daughters to like they're not it's not a real life thing. 
it's a fictional story. And it's about these three daughters who are, who their moms are celebrities. Like, one is a model, one is, one of their moms is a model, one of their moms is a singer. I think the one's dad, um, she's not a celebrity, but her dad is like this mogul for like housing or something like that. I don't know. Um, he's like a CEO of a company. And it's basically, it takes, it's about this one daughter, Lizzie. And her, her mom is the model. And what happens is, is, um, she's just tired of not feeling like herself when she gets, like, in the spotlight or limelight with her mom. She doesn't really, like, fit in with, like, the high-class society, stuff like that. And in the end, she becomes a model. It's supposed to be kind of, like, real modeling where, like, you're, like, like, a, you look like a normal person. Like, you're not, like, size two your size whatever and you don't wear makeup and you just look yourself like you're like a natural kind of look I guess I don't know and she decides all this stuff happens and then she works with a designer who her mom used to work with and she finds out that modeling really isn't for her and she learns that her mom was right about starting to get into the modeling industry and stuff like that. It was a really okay book. I mean, it was kind of like, yeah, like that was, that's always like a storyline, isn't it? Where like you get some kind of famous singer or model or somebody like in f these fictional books and, or in movies or something. And then they just say, oh, I want to be just like them. And then... They realize they don't want to be just like their parent or whatever, you know. They want to be themselves. So this is another mystery book. And this is called, it's, it's I call it the Cat Who series. And it's by Lillian, Lillian Jackson Braun. It's about this small town journalist who solves mysteries with his cats. It sounds kind of weird, but it's not. I really like it. And this one is called The Cat Who Smelled a Rat. This is a hard pack book. Um, some of the chapters were longer than others in this book just because it was a hard back book. A hard back book. And because the I mean, the words weren't that big. But and it wasn't that it wasn't the words were that big, it was the pages that the quality of the paper that they used for this book. The pages were really thick. It seemed like, like, the only way, reason I could describe it is, is it feels like when you read this book, if, like, in a hardback, if you have a hardback, a hardback book, it seems like the paper is sticking together. So it seems like you're skipping two pages, but you're not. That's how high quality the, the paper is. It's really dense paper. This is what it looks like. So this is about Quill, Q-W-I-L. I don't never know how to say his full name. I just call him Quill. It's like Qu Quillerin or something like that. I don't know. And what this is about, it's about this, um, these mines in their town, because they live in a New England town, um, are blowing up, like somebody setting fire to them. And the only, it says, it's it had some scientific thing in it where, um, like, the, these fires have been building inside of these mines for years, and the only way to, like, stop them is, is from the, the environment getting colder. So they're waiting for the big one, which is their big, big snowstorm. And Quill tries to figure out, obviously Quill tries to figure out who is doing these this to this mot to these mines and who um blew up his friends well his dead friends um bookstore and stuff and it was a really good book i mean these books the cat who books are like they are really good like if you don't like agatha christie or you don't like james patterson or whatever these are good books to get into. The, the you, these you do not find 
in Walmart or Target or book, I mean, bookstores, yeah, but not in, like, shopping stores like Target or Walmart or Giant, the grocery store, you know, stuff, like, stores like that where you, like, you can find only, like, the new released kind of books. You won't find them in here. This is another mystery book. I feel like most, I think all but the two I showed you are all, they're all mystery books. This is called All That Glitters. Now, I don't read these in order. They do come in some kind of order, but I don't read them in order. I just get them as I get them. It's like with Kahoo books. The Kahoo books do go in a specific order, but I only read them when I get them. I don't wait to get the whole series and then read them. This is number 15. It's called All That Glitters. It's by it's this it's called The Secrets of the Blue Hill Library series. And it's by Emily Thomas. And this is what it looks like. Now, this one is about this massive storm that sweeps through Blue Hill. And Blue Hill is in Pennsylvania. At least that's what it says in the books. And it's about this, it's about this drifter guy named Jack. And she finds it kind um, what's it? I always forget her name. I forget. Annie. Yeah, Annie's her name. Sorry, I was drawing a blank. Annie's her name, and she, her kids are go missing in this massive storm, and this drifter guy named Jack Kendall shows up with the kids and stuff, so he is a key plot in the story because Annie tries to figure out who he really is. And if you really did know her aunt, her aunt is the one, Aunt Edie, is the woman who she moved to Blue Hill, Blue Hill for because she died and left her, her house and her library and stuff like that. So yeah, it was a really good book. So the whole book, she's just trying to figure out who this Jack guy is and if his stories about what he's saying is true because he ha he does have these extraordinary stories and she's trying to make sure that they're true or not. I really like these books, to be honest. I really like the covers of them because they're really colorful. So it's kind of like when you see them at like book sales, they kind of like draw your eye because they're bright or dark colors. And they're hardback books, which I really like. So that was my book review video. I hope you guys liked it. Please comment below and tell me some of your books that you want to recommend that I read or books that you really enjoyed for this month. Please subscribe and like this video. I'll see you guys next time with another video and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.